migrating Jenkins from one server to another. You've been tasked with migrating a Jenkins controller from one server to another. For a long time, the old Jenkins server was working completely fine, but recently you've started having a lot more out-of-memory exceptions because the server that you're running on only has 4 gig of RAM. But what you want to do now is you want to move that Jenkins controller from that 4 gig machine over to an 8 gig machine. Now, if you're currently running on a VM, usually the best thing to do is just to go ahead and resize that VM. However, in your situation, you're running on either a physical server or you're using a cloud instance that is locked to a specific size of memory. Now, if your Jenkins home directory is on a separate volume, you might be able to detach that volume from the old server and attach it to the new server, and that might be it. However, if your Jenkins home isn't on a separate volume, then you're going to have to back up that Jenkins home directory and migrate it over to the new server. Now, another thing that you're going to have to deal with is when you change instances, more than likely you're going to get a new IP address. So that might be something as well that you have to deal with. So here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.426.2. We can see here in the URL that this is named Jenkins old. Now I also have the new server set up and ready to go and it's named Jenkins new. Now I want to go ahead and call out the differences between these two servers, but I also want to go ahead and call out the things that are the same. Now for the things that are the same, we have the same version of Java. Now when you're moving from an old server to a new server, there's a lot of things that you want to keep exactly the same. The version of Java that's running the Jenkins process, that's the first thing you want to keep the same. In my case, that's Java 17. Also, I have the same version of Jenkins installed, and again, that's 2.426.2. Here are the differences. In my case, one server actually has one gig of RAM and the other server has two gig of RAM. Now, in real life, you're gonna be using a server that has more RAM than that, but with this example, I'll be able to show you some of the items that you'll be changing when you do move servers. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the old server and understand what we're going to be expecting when we go to the new server. We have one job set up on the server. This job has been run once, and then also we have an agent set up on the server. Now this agent is specifically an SSH type agent. So when we move this controller from one server to another, then the configuration for that agent is also going to move over to the new server. Here's the key. Everything that you need in order to run the Jenkins controller lives inside of the Jenkins home directory. Now, where is the Jenkins home directory? It may be different depending on how that controller was initially set up. By default, the Jenkins home directory is slash var slash lib slash Jenkins. Now, the way you can verify that on your controller is you can go to manage Jenkins, go to system, and at the top of the page, you're going to see the home directory var lib Jenkins. Now, if yours isn't var lib Jenkins, make note of where that location is for that server. Now, let's go over and take a look at the new server. So the new server does not have any agent set up. It does not have any jobs set up. So all that I did was I did a fresh installation, Jenkins 2.426.2, making sure that I had Java 17 installed, and that's it, just a fresh install. And I wanted to make sure everything came up and reacted as I expected. Now, I was talking about agents a few moments ago. If you also have inbound agents, that means the agent is actually making the connection back to the controller. Because of the IP address changes that I'm going to have, I would have to go back and reconfigure my inbound agents to point at the correct controller. Now, in my case, I only have a single SSH based agent. So in my case, the controller will automatically reconnect to that agent as long as the network is open between the new server and that agent. So let's go ahead and get this set up and going. So in my case, what I first want to do is I want to go ahead and go into my new server. I already know everything's working fine and I want to shut down everything. So let's go ahead and go over into the shell for my new server. I'm going to become root. It'll just make my life easier as I go through the rest of this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop Jenkins. I'm also going to go ahead and disable the Jenkins service because I don't want any accidents to happen while I'm going through this migration process. I'm gonna go back over to the browser and make sure that we're actually down. We can see here that we're not connecting, so we're in good shape there. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and rename 
the Jenkins home directory that exists on the new server. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a backup of the Jenkins home directory from the old server and moving it over to the new server. So I want to go ahead and just take what I have now on the new server and just rename it, stick it off to the side, just in case we need to go back to it for whatever reason. So I'm going to go over to var lib. What we'll see here is that our Jenkins directory is owned by Jenkins for both the user and the group and Jenkins. So what I want to do is I want to rename that Jenkins directory to Jenkins original. So I'm going to say move Jenkins to Jenkins dash original. We'll verify that. We can see now that Jenkins original has been renamed and there is no var lib Jenkins directory at all. Now for our old server, there's really not a whole lot to do in between. So we'll go back over to our UI. We'll take a look at the controller. Everything is still up and running. Let's go into our shell for our old server. So if we take a look in the old server, again, I'll go in as root. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and stop the service. Much like what I did on the new server, I'm also going to go ahead and disable the service because I do not want that service to come back up at any point for any reason. Let's go ahead and double check the browser and make sure that we're down. We're for sure down on our old server. Now we can go ahead and work on backing up our Jenkins home directory. So let's go ahead and CD into var lib. We can see here that our Jenkins directory is set up. So let's go ahead and back that up, but let's turn it into a tarball. So with the tarball, we're going to go ahead and rename it to Jenkins underscore home tar dot GZ. We're telling it to back up the Jenkins directory and we're going to put it into slash temp. Now you may choose to put it somewhere else. I'm just putting mine into slash temp. We can see here that the file has been created in slash temp. And let's go ahead and verify the contents of this. We'll do a TVF temp Jenkins home. We can see the output from that. Everything's looking as we expect. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and SCP the file from the old server over to the new server. Let's clear this out. I'm going to say SCP, the file from temp, and then I'm sending it over to the new server. So let's go ahead and go back over to the shell for our new server. Let's double check the file inside of temp. We can see our Jenkins home tarball showed up inside of temp. Now what we're ready to do is we want to go ahead and extract that tarball into varlib Jenkins. But remember, inside the tarball is the Jenkins directory. So at this point, we are in varlib. So what we want to do is we want to do tar xzbf slash temp Jenkins home. So when we extract this, we can see the root of that is Jenkins. But if we take a look inside of varlib, we can see now our Jenkins directory has now been expanded. Also note that the ownership is correct. Our previous Jenkins original was owned by Jenkins Jenkins. We can also see that the Jenkins we just extracted is also owned by Jenkins Jenkins. Now you might want to go ahead and do a chone dash r Jenkins Jenkins on the Jenkins directory. But since I know that my UID and GID was the same between the two servers, I know everything's already set up for my installation. Now, remember I said early on that my old server was a one gig machine and my new server is a two gig machine. And since I've been running into a lot of out of memory exceptions, I want to go ahead and bump up my XMS and XMX for this Jenkins controller. So let's go ahead and clear this out. And we're going to edit my systemd file. And what we're going to do is we're going to change our 512 setting to one gig because it is a two gig machine. I'm just going to give it a gig for heap. Let's go ahead and save this. Now remember this service is still off on our new controller. So if I go back and take a look at Firefox, what I'm going to see here, it's still not up and running. Let's go back over to our shell. Let's go ahead and start the service. Now that it's started, let's go back over to the browser. Let's see if it's started back up fully. Let's go ahead and log back in. Now what we can see on the new server, we see our test job that was over on the old server. We also see that our agent is set up. Now that I've done this restore, I want to go ahead and run my job once to make sure that it actually works as expected. We can see here from the output that job run two completed successfully. So when the restore of the Jenkins home from the old server over to the new server was done, and we started everything back up. Now we can see that the migration has been completed almost. Now remember when we set up the new server, we disabled the systemd service. So let's go ahead and go back into systemd and let's re-enable the Jenkins service. And also if you're running this behind a reverse proxy, 
Now is the time to go ahead and change up your reverse proxy to send the traffic from the proxy down to this new server. Now that you've completed this migration from an old server to a new server, now is the time that you might want to go ahead and upgrade your versions of Java, maybe even the version of Jenkins if you're a few versions behind. But the key part to this is when you're doing the migration from an old server to a new server, make sure that you keep the Java version the same and the Jenkins version the same. So when you do migrate that Jenkins home directory, you should have very few, if any, problems during the migration. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.